All right, game time. Let's let me talk about this. How many of you have this shared memory uh, that I have? Okay, it's it's fourth grade, third grade, recess. You're out on the playground. You're lined up. They're picking teams for kickball. You're standing there on the line, and the two most athletic people are the team captains, and they are picking for teams, and they pick the first person. It's not you. <laughs> I know some of you can't relate to this, but some of you can. The majority of you can, I hope. Okay? Pick the same person. It's not you. Third, not you. Fourth, and you are beginning to pray. You begin all prayer. That you will not be the last one picked. Is there anybody that can relate to me in this situation? And please, somebody raise your hand. <laughs> okay? Yes, okay. I'm not alone. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Every person, whether you're in second grade, whether you're now, is... You want to be the kind of team player that everybody wants. You don't want to be the person that's picked last. And I want to talk today a little bit about the power of team and how to become a team player. And I want to go to a scripture that's in Genesis 11, verse 4. And I want to look at it in kind of a, maybe a little bit different way than you've seen this before. And here's how it goes right here. Genesis 11, 4. It says, let's build a great city with a tower that reaches to the skies, a monument to our greatness. This will bring us together and keep us from scattering all over the world. Now, this was humankind. These were people that were saying this together. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that people were building. Look, he said, if they can accomplish this, when they have just begun to take advantage of their common language and political unity, just think of what they will do later. Nothing will be impossible for them. And this is very soon, obviously, after the creation. And God saw us. And he saw us in our fallen and sinful state. And he said, wow, what could they possibly do together that they can't do separately? And he saw the power of people working as a team and what they could do. In fact, he saw that they were only interested on building a team for their own purposes. He said, this could be dangerous. And he, he said, I'm going to scatter them. I'm going to confuse their language. This was the Tower of Babel that they were building. And, and he, he, he spread them out. And he confused their language and he said, no, we, we cannot let the power of team um, happen here. Now that was obviously for an evil intent, the power of team. What's cool is you read on the Bible, after Christ, after the New Covenant, Book of Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, we see almost the reverse of the situation in where God didn't confuse their language, but he brought their language together so that they could be one. And now he's speaking to a redeemed team, so to speak. He's speaking to us, the body of Christ, that can come together and be one, not for our own purposes, not for our selfish desires, a monument to our greatness, but for Him. And what I want to submit to you guys today, as believers, as Christians, we can be an amazing and unstoppable team, if we work as a team. And now I know something very clearly, as you're going to find, now last week in that game, Kansas City, uh, New England, there were a couple of very important players that went out. Both quarterbacks went out. Now, those are important individuals that make a huge contribution to the team. But fortunately, the team does not rest on one or two players. It's us all together. And what I want to do is I want to speak to you guys as individuals, but understanding that I'm talking about the team. You want to be the kind of, kind of team player. You want to be the kind of individual that is a team player and contributes to the team in a way. And so what I want to do today is I want to talk about seven qualities of a team player. Not talking to the star that wants to show up and be about themselves and your own greatness. Talking about the team player. Let's go ahead and just jump in and talk about them. Number one, a team player is adaptable. A team player is adaptable. And here's the thing right here. Here's the statement. If you won't change the team, and every individual is, is, is supposed to change the team in a positive way. And if you don't do that, if you don't adapt to be able to do that, then the team may just change you. And it won't be a positive change. It'll be changing you out of the rotation. You have to be adaptable. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 says it like this. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. This was a team player that was saying, I'm going to have to do some different things to make it happen. And I've got a couple guys coming up here to... They're gonna sit. They're gonna sit by me. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. What are you guys doing? Just hanging out. Okay, we got it. I got trouble team players. Come on, let's give it to the team players here. <laughs> I was like, what are we gonna do? I thought they were gonna tackle me. I was getting scared. 
I'm like, I'm having flashbacks to the kickball thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to run, you know? <laughs> I thought you guys would grab me and carry me off. <laughs> they were coming to be a part of my dream team here. They would definitely add to that team for sure. You've got to be adaptable, okay? Adaptable, that means you've got to change. Um, one of the most uh, well-known uh, names in, uh, in the auto industry is uh, Ford, Henry Ford. Uh, he is credited for making it to where everybody could get a car, could buy one. In, the, in the, uh, the 1910s, the 1920s, everybody owned a Model T. And he learned how to mass produce it in such a way that everybody could have it. And it was an amazing, amazing thing. But here's the problem, is he didn't understand the issue of adaptability. And here's what happened is in the 1920s, there were other competitors that were starting to adapt and change. And he was so infatuated with his invention of the Model T that he would not change. And his team players were coming to him and saying, man, you've got to change. He's like, no, we're doing it this way. In fact, it even got to the point where they began to get a hand. In fact, one of the guys brought in a, a prototype for a car. And they said, hey, we need to do it this way. We need to change. And he was so upset with the came and he took a sledgehammer and just started destroying the thing. Well, finally he learned that, you know what, it is not a team player. A team player has to be adaptable. And so he did, he adapted, he changed it. Another characteristic of a team player is a team player is committed. Not only are they adaptable, but they're committed. There are no half-hearted champions. Luke 9, 62, Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back at the scripture service. In other words, a team player is not half-hearted. A lot of you have heard the story uh, of Navy SEAL uh, Michael Mansour, who in September of two years ago uh, was in Iraq. And he was taking in a firefight, a gun battle, and he was taking a position on top of a building with some other soldiers around him when a live grenade comes over onto the roof hits him on the chest and bounces on the floor. And immediately, he jumps on it, it goes off, and he shields the explosion with his body from the people around him. And he was, he was evac immediately, but he died just a few hours later. The other guys that were around him, there were three other guys, were injured, but they lived. And I think about team players committed, not half-hearted. That guy understood what it meant to commit. Now, I'm sure in that second, he had to make a decision that was life or death. But I'm sure that before that decision had to come about, he said, before he signed up and in his training, said, I am going to commit. I'm not going to be half-hearted. That is the quality of a team player. A team player is adaptable, but committed. Third thing, a team player is dependable. A team player is dependable. How many of you know, um, maybe in your, your work environment, uh, you have to have somebody call on to do a task. And you know the ones that they're the go-to player. You know that if I ask them to do it, it's going to be done. Just, just write it down. But then you know the ones that's like, eh, it's kind of hit or miss, it's shaky. It's very, very easy uh, to see who are the go-to players. Team players are dependable. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands, strands is not quickly broken. Dependability. You've got to have some people on the team that are dependable. They can come alongside and make that tight. Make it strong. 